What's up guys and welcome back to Keep It Techie, where we break down Linux and open source tech in a way that's easy to follow. Now, today we're talking about something I've been noticing more and more in 2025, and that's Flatpaks. Yep, that app format that folks either really love or side-eye, like a mystery snap package. But real talk, is Flatpak the future of Linux applications? Fedora has been riding that wave for a while now, and you bunch is starting to lean back into it again in this latest long-term release of 24.04 and devs are packaging their apps up in flat packs first before anything else so in this video i want to break down the big three flat packs versus snap versus app image and then talk about what sandboxing really means and why it matters and also show you how to actually manage flat pack apps the right way and of course, I'll give you my thoughts at the end. So don't hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. All right, before we go comparing flat packs to everything else, let's actually talk about what the heck flat pack is. So imagine you're trying to install an app, right? You go to your package manager, install it, and boom, it's pulling in all kinds of shared dependencies from the system. Now that works until something breaks or worse, you upgrade your distro and now your app just won't run because it was depending on some specific older library. That's where Flatpaks step in. Flatpaks is what we call a universal packaging format. But what makes it special is it bundles the app in all its dependencies. It also runs the app in a sandbox environment and it works the same across all distros. So Fedora, Ubuntu, Orch, OpenSUSE, Flatpak don't care. You just install it and it works the same. That's the dream. All right, let's talk battle of the formats. Of course, I just explained what Flatpak is, but let me just give you a little bit more of the background. It's created by the folks in the freedomdesktop.org ecosystem. It focuses on desktop apps. So think GUI apps like GIMP, OBS, VLC. It uses portals for sandboxed permissions. And we'll cover that in a little bit, but it needs Flatpak runtime like GNOME and KDE runtimes. And also it's managed via the Flatpak command line or like in GNOME software or KDE Discover. Now the pros is great for integration, sandbox is cross distro and used by Fedora and Linux Mint. Now there were some cons to it. It can use more disk space and some apps need permissions tweaked. Now let's hop over to Snap. If you can't tell, we're on a Canonical website. So it's developed by Canonical, AKA Ubuntu's parent company. And it supports both desktop and server apps. I've shown you guys how to install Snaps on servers and in a desktop environment in a lot of my videos. So you guys got a couple examples of that, but it runs everything in a loop mounted squash file system. Also sandboxed. And then it uses Snap D, which always runs in the background. Now some of the pros, it has automatic updates and that works great with command line tools. Now, some of the cons, there is a slower startup, centralized control by Canonical. Some folks just don't like that vibe. And let's be real, Snaps got a bad rep in the community. Ubuntu forced Snap with Firefox and that sparked a whole movement. Folks literally switched distros over that. No lie. Now let's check out app images right fast. And it's basically a single file you download and run that's it. There's no installation, no daemon, no sandbox. Now, one cool thing about it or pro is that it's portable, simple, and you can run it from a USB drive. Now, the cons are there is no update mechanism. You basically have to go back to the site where you got the app image from and download the newest version. And then there is no sandboxing and not integrated into your menu unless you hack it a little bit. And so after running through all that, I still look at flat packs as the best balance in 2025, especially if you're on desktop Linux. And of course, that's my opinion. I know not everyone will agree with me, but I do like snap packages and app image. I, I really do. Snaps are super simple to use. I love them on Ubuntu systems. It's very simple to install them. You just run snap install and then a package and the same thing. It's almost like the apt package manager. It's just a snap package and it's very simple to use on the command line. And then app images, they're cool. You know what I'm saying? I just don't like the fact that you can't 
update them so you have to go back and download them again so in my opinion the best balance is those flat packs what's up y'all if you've been watching my channel for a minute you already know i stay talking about linux and if you're looking for a solid reliable enterprise linux distro let me put you on to rocky linux this is the go-to replacement for CentOS, and it's built for the community by the community it's got everything you need for a stable and secure Linux experience, whether you're running servers, home labs, or enterprise workloads. And the best part is backed by CIQ, making sure it stays rock solid for the long haul. So if you're tired of these companies pulling a plug on your favorite distros, Rocky Linux is where you need to be. And I've covered Rocky Linux before, and trust me, it's worth checking out. So head over to rockylinux.org to learn more and get started. Now let's talk about sandboxing. And let me get over here and show you guys a basic explanation of how it works. So if you click on, let's see, basic concept. This breaks it all down for you. Because at the end of the day, most folks don't understand the sandboxing process, but it's super important. Now with Flatpaks, every app runs in its own container, as you can see by the image. You got three different apps right there, and they are separated from the rest of your system. So if you install something sketchy or it gets compromised, you can't just start poking around your system files or spying on your clipboard or something to that effect. And the best part is you can control what each app can access. Like for instance, the file system, you can set it to where it has read only or full access to the file system, the microphone or webcam. You can set it for the app to get permission, network access. You could cut off the full network access to an application, which I think is like one of the coolest. And you can manage all this through the command line or just use a GUI tool like flat seal. Flat seal is like the flat control panel. You can enable or disable stuff with just a click. And, I, and I'll show you guys that when we get on our desktop, but think of it like Android app permissions, but for your Linux desktop and you control it. So this gives you power and especially if you're downloading stuff from flat hub. Okay. Let's look at how to actually install and manage flat apps on Fedora. So let me switch over to my virtual machine and we can get started. All right, so let's break down how to actually use Flatpak the right way. And I'll be using Fedora 41, which by the way, makes the whole process super clean. Fedora's been on Flatpak for minutes and in 41, it comes pre-installed. So it's no need to touch a thing out of the gate. So let me walk you guys through it. And the first thing you wanna do is verify that Flatpak has been installed. So let's open up the terminal right fast boom and then i'll zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit better let's go there we go and then we can make the terminal a little bit bigger so you guys can see everything that i'm doing and just to be sure flat pack is installed all you have to do is type flat p a k and then dash dash version and this will tell you the current version that's installed on your system and if you don't see this for some odd reason, because it should be on Fedora by default, you can just run sudo dnf install flatpak and then dash y and press enter. And it'll go through and install flatpak for you, which is on our system already. As you can see down here, it says that flatpak 1.15 is already installed. So it's going to clear the screen, but you just want to check and just verify that it is installed. Now, the next thing you need to do is enable FlatHub. Fedora does include Flatpak, but it doesn't enable flat hub by default. So we got to hook that up right fast. And it's a very simple command. All you have to do is type flat pack and then remote dash add. And then we can put dash dash if dash not dash exist. Then let's do flat hub. And I'll type out this command in it so you guys can just copy it. That way you guys can just get it right fast. Enable flat hub for door and you'll find this command there. So HTTPS colon slash flat hub dot org and then four slash repo and then four slash flat hub dot flat pack repo and press enter. And that should add our flat pack or enable it for us on the system. Just type in your password, authenticate, and you should be good to go. And then once that's done, you can browse a massive catalog of Flatpak apps from the terminal, or you can look inside of your software center and this will allow you to check out those flat packs as well. And actually, let me show you guys the software center. So if we click in there, go to software, and actually we got a couple updates up in here, but if we search for something, let's just search for, yep, let's just search for that right fast. We click in here, you can click right here down and you should be able to install it directly from Flatpak now. And as you can see, that is the default for it as well. But this one 
is in Fedora's repository. And this was is on FlatHub. And just so you guys know, you can also install an RPM package as well. All right, so let me walk you through installing a app on your Fedora system so you can see how easy it is. We'll just go down and install GIMP right fast. I'll do it from the command line. I won't do it from the software center. I just want to show you guys how to install it from the command line first. And then we'll just go over to our software center, which you can see how easy it is from the software center. All you have to do is click on it, install, select whatever you want, click install and it'll install. But let me show you guys from the command line. So it's flat pack install and then flat hub, which is the repository you want to install it from. And then you got to know what the app name is. I know GIMP's off the top of my head, but it's org dot gimp gimp in all caps and press enter and that'll install and that'll install gimp if i type it incorrectly so as you can see i put f l a k so it's flat pack and you gotta type it in right but let's go down and press enter and press y for yes we want to install that stable version of gimp's y and then press y again and this will proceed with the changes to the system it's just like a check just to make sure you want to do it and then it'll go through the install process. All right, and one thing I forgot to point out, when you first install something like GIMP, it might ask to install the runtime, like for GNOME 45 or 44, depending on what the app needs to run. And that's normal, just type Y and let it do its thing. But I just wanted to point some of this out to you, but this is the permissions that are set for it. You can see the file system access, the bus access, your network access, so file back X11, Wayland, and here your tags. And this is the size of everything as it downloaded, but it'll say installation complete once you're done. And you can launch GIMP from your app menu. So if we go under Stort, I'm not gonna open it up. I'm gonna open it up from the command line. I just wanna show you, you can click there and that'll open up GIMP, the Flatpak version that we installed, but you can also type Flatpak and then run. And then you can just type out that same name that we typed in to install it. So org.gimp, GIMP and press enter. And this will launch GIMP for us. And like I stated, GIMP is now running sandboxed and it's cross distro and fully up to date. As you can see, we got that latest version of GIMP, which is 3.0.2, but let's go ahead and close that. But there you go, you got GIMP right there. It's like that alternative to Photoshop. Now let's go ahead and close it because I want to show you guys how to manage it, manage you know your actual applications that you have installed using Flatpak. So let's clear and what you can do is type flat pack and then list. And this will list out everything you have installed using Flatpak. And let's say you want to uninstall, I'll just show you guys from here as well. Well, you could just type flat pack uninstall and then the package name. And so org.gimp.gimp and press enter and it'll go down and remove it. So all you have to do is type Y to proceed. And I'll go through and get rid of that package off of our system. And then also, if you need to clean out apps and run times that you're pretty much not using anymore, then all you have to do is type basically the same command, except for the package name. You just type dash unused. And this will just make sure it removes things that are not used. So it's like that auto remove with apt package manager to remove all your extra packages that are not needed. Now, let me go down and close this because I want to show you guys a little bit more of flat hub. So let me clear right fast and let's install flat seal right fast and then flat hub because we want to install it from that repository. And I noticed I'll top my head a little bit. So I hope I type it in right. Yeah, there we go. So it requires this runtime. Just type Y for yes, boom, Y for yes, and that'll install it all for us. So I want to show you guys how to install in Flat Seal or actually manage your flat packs using Flat Seal. Now let's go down and install something else right fast. I'm going to install Spotify. So it's com.spotify and then dot client, I believe. So it's all case sensitive. You got to make sure you type it in properly. Y and let's go down and get that installed as well. All right, so Spotify is installed and let me show you guys how to use flat seal and let's just press the up arrow. Let's go flat seal. Here we go. And let's run flat seal for center. I'm going to open it up and boom. Like I said, it's super simple to use to manage all the permissions of application. Like for instance, this Spotify, we can make sure it doesn't use the network. All you have to do is click off and it won't use the network, which won't really work. Spotify uses the internet. It needs the internet and then also your sockets, your device. 
So any of your devices, input devices, virtualization, shared memory, you can allow certain things right up in here. So development assist calls, programs from other architectures, if you need to Bluetooth, you know what I'm saying? You can allow it to have Bluetooth access and then your file system right here. So you got a lot of options in here for each one of the applications installed. And this is some something that most people use right here down like the portal so let's say you install obs studio then you can control specifically what the application has access to like the background like running in the background notifications microphone speaker camera location all that stuff you can manage exactly what that application can do on your system or what it can access on your system and so that's pretty cool and i know i've been showing you guys from the command line but if we go in here and search for a flat seal we'll be able to find it and you actually got to type it in right but yeah there you go so flat seal and you can open up that way as well i just finished showing you from the command line and in my opinion flat seal is perfect for people who want control but don't want to memorize all these different commands because you could do a lot of this from the command line but flat seal is the simplest way of managing it which i use that as well so here's my take Flatpaks is doing everything right in my opinion especially for desktop linux users it's distro agnostic it gives users control over permissions it's got wide adoption in fedora linux mint and even ubuntu is showing Flatpak love again now i'm not saying snap or app images or dead snap still runs strong in server spaces like i said i use that on all my ubuntu servers that's a great way of sandboxing applications and then also app images is dope for the portable one-off tools but for desktop applications for the future of how apps get delivered to normal linux users Flatpak is where it's at in my opinion it's the future maybe not perfect but it is winning and the best part you're in control of what the program has access to so no forced installs no canonical daemon always running also no mystery files from github that may or may not work just clean installs better sandboxing and great community support all right so that's it for today's breakdown flat pack is definitely worth keeping an eye on this year and if you haven't tried it yet i recommend giving it a shot let me know in the comments do you use flat pack already do you still rock with snap or app images or are you just sticking to the good old package manager and calling it a day either way i appreciate y'all rocking with me if you learned something today go down and hit that like button subscribe if you haven't already and share this video with someone who might be confused about all these formats out here now remember keep it techie keep learning and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace yo what's up y'all listen if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move let me tell you tech is where it's at i don't care where you're coming from whether you've got a degree a ged or just pure hustle there's room for you in this game you see tech is more than just keyboards and code it's solving problems creating opportunities and building the future you already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start it cares where you're willing to go you can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech.